farmers in southwestern Minnesota witnessed the start of a catastrophic event on June 12, 1873. When they looked to the west, they saw what looked like a ferocious storm barreling down on them. Yet the cloud looked unusual, and it was accompanied by a strange roar, not the distant rumbles of thunder. It also didn't look quite like a thunderstorm, nor a feared tornado that could be at the head of a storm system. This cloud looked different because it was alive. They were not looking at the buildup of water drops and crystals. They were looking at living creatures flying right for them. Once they were enveloped by the creatures, they knew that they were all in peril and that their crops would be lost. What blanketed parts of the Midwest in 1873? It was a wave of grasshoppers who could eat an entire field in a few hours and wreak havoc on an area. The farmers on June 12th had experienced the first day of the grasshopper plague that would continue until 1877. Let's learn more about this event and the impact it had on farmers and the region here at Learning the Social Sciences. And as always, remember to click that like and subscribe button. Grasshoppers are jumping insects that are traditionally seen when walking down a path or maybe out in one's garden or basking in a field. They adapt well to various habitats, including grasslands, semi-arid regions, and lowland tropical forests, but can be found in other areas as well, including a wetland marsh. They tend to only live about a year, yet their eggs live throughout the winter to be born in the spring, when then they bask in the nice heat of the summer sun and live through the fall, usually in solitude, unless they're going to go find a mate. When the cold weather comes, their life cycle comes to an end. So how did the cloud of grasshoppers, known as the Rocky Mountain Locust, come to be in the 1870s? Why were there so many and how did their numbers remain high for so many years? Also, if they were so numerous, then why are they extinct today? Conditions need to be just right for a large number of grasshoppers or locusts to come and form a swarm. Conditions need to be very dry in drought conditions for the maximum number of eggs to survive. The drier the soil, the more grasshoppers. And the conditions in the 1870s were perfect for producing the coming plague in the Rocky Mountains. Yet, also because of those conditions, the swarm would move to the Midwest. The Rocky Mountain locusts that descended upon Minnesota, Iowa, and South Dakota ate up acres of crops in 1873 like they had done in the 1850s and 1865. However, they were also able to lay their eggs in the areas where they infested. Although farmers tried to destroy their eggs, when 1874 came around, an even larger swarm formed as grasshoppers emerged from under the feet of Midwest farmers and combined with others that flew in from Colorado. They now stretched from Minnesota through Iowa and Kansas and even impacted some farmers in Texas. Yet the destruction in the upper Midwest was devastating for poor farmers as they had little option to detour the pests who thrived on devouring their corn, wheat, and barley. To make matters worse, there was no system in place to assist the farmers who were getting inundated with these locusts year after year after year. In 1875, around 198,000 acres were covered with locusts. 
That's the size of California. In 1876, 500,000 acres were eaten and some railroads had to stop operating during the high point as trains would lose traction as the squished bugs made the rails too slippery. Farmers tried everything they could think of to get rid of the grasshoppers. They would rake or sweep them up or put them into buckets and throw them into fires. Yet the large numbers made this ineffective. Some then took more drastic action and set their fields ablaze so that they could not come back the following season. Yet the swarms continued to block out the sun as they rolled in during the summers of 1874, 75, and 76. Some tried to lay blankets over their crops, but they chewed through the fabric. In fact, the locusts were known to eat the wool off the back of sheep and even the clothes of people trying to rid them from their property. Imagine going out to try to get rid of these locusts and they land on your clothing and then you start to notice they're eating it. Some tried to plow their fields to find and kill the eggs. A hopper dozer was invented to try to kill as many hoppers as possible by attracting the insects to a large metal sheet that was then covered in tar and molasses. Once caught in the mixture, they would be set on fire. Yet again, with the number of Rocky Mountain locusts sitting in the trillions, some estimate up to 12.5 trillion, there wasn't much one could do. The summer of 1877 did not see the masses like years before. A late April snowstorm killed many of the eggs and the survivors largely flew on, thus ending the plague. The events of the 1870s have been written about by Laura Ingalls Wilder and Oli Edvert Rolvag. A chapel was constructed in Cold Springs, Minnesota in 1877 as a way to ask God to relieve them from the plague of insects. The Grasshopper Chapel, also known as the Assumption Chapel, was built as a call for mercy. The governor of Minnesota that year, John S. Pilberry, declared April 26, 1877 to be a statewide day of prayer. When that April snowstorm killed many of the eggs and the swarm numbers were greatly diminished, some people linked the two as a divine intervention. Either way, the plague years had ended. The Rocky Mountain locusts would decrease in numbers over the next decades until they were extinct. It is proposed that more people moving to the Rockies caused the demise of the locusts as cattle stomped on the grounds where the eggs were laid and new irrigation and plowing destroyed the eggs that were there as well. Although they could reach numbers in the trillions during the height of the plague, in other years they were mainly in a small area around 3,000 square miles. So when humans moved in and started to impact the region, they didn't have a lot of other options. Yet the 1930s would see another grasshopper outbreak. However, these were known as the Carolina grasshoppers. The grasshopper plague of the 1870s were devastating to farmers, communities, and the entire American agricultural system as a whole. It was an experience that is not known to the United States today. But in areas like Africa and the Middle East, they still experience outbreaks that threaten the livelihood of farmers and communities that rely on the food they produce. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video here at Learning the Social Sciences. Remember to always hit that like and subscribe button so you know when we post new videos here to our channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye-bye.